Oh, hi. I've been gone for a while, haven't I? Sorry, I've just been reading my comments. Do you want me to make another video? Okay. So, before I get started, I just want to let you know that I've got a Patreon now, and I'd really appreciate it if you went and checked it out. So, go and do that, please. The link is here and down there. Cool. So my videos have been getting some comments recently, and I thought it'd be a good idea just to go through them and respond to some of them. I mean, I respond to a lot of comments, but doing it in video form seemed like a good idea. Most of the comments will be from my most recent video, but you don't need to have seen that to watch this. It's an hour and 15 minutes long. I'm not expecting you to watch it for this. That's ridiculous. There'll also be some comments from older videos because you guys have been going back and leaving some really good comments on those from like a year ago. But like I said, you don't need to watch anything before watching this. I'll explain everything that's going on. Don't go searching up these comments and harassing the people that left them. That's not cool. I will just block you from my channel if you do that. You've been warned. Literally, if I see anyone doing it, instant block. So don't do it. It's not good for anyone. This one is almost funny to me because the first line is something that I debunked in my video. And so many people did this. They made comments talking about things that I had already debunked. So it really felt like a lot of people were commenting without actually watching the video, which is fair. It's an hour and 15 minutes long. I don't expect you to watch all of it, but maybe if you're going to make a criticism, you should make sure that I haven't covered it already. <laughs> but then it goes on to say that Oprah, Oprah and Obama proved that black people can achieve anything. But that's the thing, isn't it? Two people beating the system doesn't mean that the system isn't broken. It's like saying that just one billionaire coming from poverty proves that all poor people are just lazy. And then they go on to misunderstand and be quite rude towards trans people, in particular non-binary people. And here's the thing for anyone who thinks that non-binary isn't trans because you don't transition. That is just not true. I know plenty of non-binary people who have undergone some form of medical transition. You don't need to do that to be trans, but non-binary people do do that. And being trans doesn't necessarily mean transitioning from one sex to another. The definition of trans has kind of changed to be more identifying with a gender that is different than the one you were assigned at birth. It's kind of similar to how bisexual doesn't mean attracted to two sexes anymore so much as it means attracted to two or more genders. This person doesn't seem to have a solid grasp of the topic that they're talking about. And they could be a troll, but there are people that genuinely believe this, that are misinformed and ignorant. And I don't think treating them like a lost cause or just some asshole is really that helpful. Look, it can feel pretty confusing to understand at first, but it's actually really simple. Gender and sex are two different things. Gender is usually assigned based on perceived sex, and some people don't feel comfortable in the gender that they were assigned at birth. And gender also doesn't need to be binary. That's kind of the whole thing. That's all it is. You don't need to understand how that feels, because you probably won't. All you need to do is to listen, show compassion, and believe people when they tell you about their own experiences. And as for the class divide thing, that's just not really the case. There is absolutely an issue of classism, particularly here in the UK, and classism and racism are definitely intertwined, but they are distinct things. They're not the same being, despite them being closely related. That's why you still see white people having better class and education mobility than black people in the same economic position. And even if you think that it is entirely down to classism, you still need to ask yourself the question of why it disproportionately affects black people which is just racism. It all comes back to racism. Okay, as for this one, I didn't say that color made any difference as to whether you were right or wrong. I said that these people are pretty much categorically wrong in most instances, and also they seem to be talking over black people. And also there are plenty of sources in the document in my description that show evidence of systemic racism. And there will also be sources in the document in the description of this video. And on top of that, in the past, there were plenty of laws that directly affected black people. But before you go nuts in the comments, just know that I know that doesn't mean that it's evidence of systemic racism now, but changing those laws does not immediately rectify the racism that they cause. Those laws were explicitly racist. Systemic racism now is much more implicitly racist. It's less obvious. It's not just as simple as laws that are explicitly made to affect the lives of black people. It's black opportunities being hampered at every level, making the racism systemic, as in present throughout the system. As I said, in the document in the description of this video, there are plenty of sources that will provide evidence for systemic racism today. But just quickly, a lot of those will touch on incarceration rates education, class mobility, gerrymandering, police murders, and in the UK, the fact that the coronavirus pandemic hit black and minority ethnic groups harder. And there's literally a government report on that one. As I said, it's implicit. It involves looking at how laws are applied and looking at data beyond literally racist rules and regulations. I mean, my video is loaded with sources and information, so that's how I know about America. Again, lived experience doesn't trump solid data and you don't really need lived experience if you're citing quite good sources, 
which I feel I did. There's also the fact that lived experience wasn't super relevant to my video. The part where lived experience would have been relevant, I kind of avoided it because I don't have that lived experience. I've never been to Savannah, Georgia, so I can't tell you that there's no racism in Savannah, Georgia. But what I can tell you about racism is that it might be less noticeable than you think. So when you say your experience is, I never noticed any racism, I can say, well, generally, you could have had racism in that place because racism isn't immediately noticeable. Do you see how me actually having been to Savannah, Georgia isn't super relevant to what I was saying? Because lived experience wasn't entirely relevant to my points, and I backed up everything that I needed to with evidence. Although, speaking of Savannah, Georgia, there's this really good comment from someone who was actually from Savannah, Georgia. So this person sent me a message on Instagram and also left a comment and I genuinely recommend you go read it. I'll try and leave a link to it in the description, but it is fantastic. It actually shows that there is racism in Savannah, Georgia, despite the fact that the person in the video I was responding to said there wasn't. And there were sources to back it up too, which is always great. So it turns out either she was lying or I was probably right when I said she didn't notice the racism growing up based on the evidence that this person has provided. Now, that's not offensive, but one thing I would say is to avoid making it about yourself. For example, I have this t-shirt that Change sent me, which is great. You should go and get something from there. Now, this t-shirt says, women don't owe you shit, which I do agree with, but I am cautious about where I wear it because I am aware that it can come off as this is what a feminist looks like. Basically, I'm worried about wearing it and seeming like I'm saying, hey, look at me, I wanna be praised for doing the bare minimum. But then again, I am worried about a lot of things for no reason. Genuinely, I think that so long as your support is genuine and you're not just wearing the t-shirt to wear the t-shirt, it's fine. One easy thing though is to try and make sure you're buying it from a black owned business because then you're actually doing something to support black people beyond just wearing a t-shirt that says, our lives matter. <laughs> Thank you, a few people actually left comments like this and I really, really appreciate them. It really helps to like not see the numbers as numbers and actually see them as people. I think that really is the reason that I don't obsess over numbers all that much because I can actually just focus on individuals. Yeah, I do find that there are some vegans that just refuse nuance and put not eating animal products above all else. Although saying that the mass farming that we do is really harmful to the environment and off the top of my head, I can't think of any animal products that are less harmful than all of the potential vegan alternatives available, except for maybe syrups and honey. Honey can actually have a directly positive impact on the environment. Other than that one, I can't really think of anything else. It is hard to be conscious of the impact of everything though. We live in a very complex, complicated world and things that you buy or do can have untold consequences that you're not aware of. So I think taking a generally vegan diet is a pretty easy way to reduce your impact on the environment, but I do respect the fact that I and other vegans could be a lot more conscious of worker welfare. Although it doesn't need to be one or the other, it can be both. We can be both conscious of our impact on the environment and how we are treating the people that make the products that we use. Like most things, it's complex and nebulous and there isn't just a simple fix. I think the best thing that we can all do is just try to shop responsibly. I saw so many comments exactly like this and it just feels like people really misunderstood the point that I was making in this video. No, I don't need to have an aesthetically black person in the video with me. I was pointing out that the person that made that video usually brings on a member of the group that she's talking about. My point was never you need to bring on X person for Y issue. I just thought it was worth noting that she took a break from the norm for her channel for this video. I'm pretty sure I also said that I wasn't mad about a black person not being in her video in my response video anyway, but whatever. I guess I could have been clearer about that. Like I said, quite a few people seem to have that same misunderstanding. If I was to make the video again, I probably wouldn't include that point just because I feel like it's really easy to misconstrue or twist around if that's your intention. This one is a lot. There were quite a few people that were saying, oh, Black Lives Matter is a Marxist movement or a Marxist organization. Oh, cultural Marxism this, trained Marxists that. And to be honest, initially I just kind of brushed it off because I thought, yeah, I know that Black Lives Matter isn't a Marxist movement. It's, it's not a Marxist movement based on the goals that they have laid out or the values that they've laid out. So I genuinely just kind of took this as, oh, these people are the kind of people that will call almost anything cultural Marxism. And I was a little bit wrong. Like some things, there is a kernel of truth to this. In 2015, one of the three founders of Black Lives Matter came out and said that she and another founder were trained Marxists. Now, I've got the full quote here for you. We do have an ideological frame. Myself and Alicia, in particular, are trained organizers. We are trained Marxists. 
we are super versed on sort of ideological theories. And I think what we really try to do is build a movement that could be utilized by many, many black folks. I understand the concern about this, but I really think we need to ask what it means. In this case, it came up in a 2015 interview that kind of recently resurfaced. It's not something that the organizers talk about a lot, or regularly. Conversely, let's compare this to Blexit, wherein the name itself is Black Exit, as in a black exit from the left, and the founder of Blexit, Candace Owens, regularly supports Trump, and seems to use Blexit itself as almost a mouthpiece, putting on a lot of events. In fact, if you go to the website, as I said in my initial video, that's what the website seems to focus on, the events. Now, back to Black Lives Matter. Two of the three founders are trained in organizing. They have studied ideological theory and they identify as Marxists. Does that mean that Black Lives Matter is a Marxist organization? No, because none of the core values of Black Lives Matter are expressly Marxist values. None of them are explicitly or exclusively Marxist values, so it's not really fair to say that it's a Marxist organization. Even so, Marxist isn't an insult, is it? If you don't want to give money to the organization because you feel like it's too close to Marxism, that is your prerogative, just the same as it is for anyone else who doesn't want to give money to Blexit because of its obvious political partisanship. The difference though is that saying that Black Lives Matter is a Marxist organization isn't wholly accurate because the Marxist ideology isn't present throughout the organization and it's not even really present in its core values. As for the donations, that's pretty fair. Other than the $6.5 million fund that they started for grassroots black organization, they haven't been super transparent about where the money is going. If you don't want to donate to Black Lives Matter because you don't really feel like you know where the money is going, that's perfectly fine. I would recommend donating to bail funds instead. The UK chapter has made a statement generally saying where it will allocate the 1 million plus pounds of funds it received, but I understand still not feeling comfortable with how transparent they're being because they're not being super transparent. That isn't an unfair criticism. I personally think that Black Lives Matter should definitely be more transparent about where the funds are being allocated. However, as I said in my original video, the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation is not the Black Lives Matter movement. The Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation not being clear about what it's doing with its money shouldn't reflect badly on the movement. You can still support the movement by donating to other things, like I said, bail funds or more grassroots organization. As for the diversity of thought point, that is something that I completely covered in my video. So I'm sorry, I don't really want to go over that again. And I don't need to be told Black Lives Matter to believe it. In fact, you say Black Lives Matter because other people need to be told it to believe it. That's kind of the point. We're not saying it for ourselves. We're saying it for the people who act as though they don't really care as much about black lives. While we're on the topic of Marxism, there are some people saying that Black Lives Matter is racist because it's Marxist and Marxism is racist because Karl Marx was a racist. And yes, Karl Marx was a racist, but I don't think the rest of that is really fair or true. I do have some brief thoughts on it. But thank you to my friend, Mr. Spice 8 Rack, who helped me out with this section by sending me some good articles and some info. I don't want to get too deep into this because it is a big topic that can be an entire video of itself and I'd really want to do more research before expanding on it. Let me know if you want to see that, but this is just going to be brief. Generally, from what I've read, Marxism isn't inherently racist, despite the fact that Karl Marx was. In fact, it has been used to fight racism. There is an article which you can find in the description which goes into a specific case of unionized British workers making a concerted stand against the cotton trade. Simply put, Marxism is an economic ideology which wants to get rid of exploitation of the workers, but it doesn't really fit well with racism. It's not inherently racist. In fact, from what I've seen, it's quite the opposite. It can lend itself fairly well to anti-racism, which is probably why two of the founders of Black Lives Matter consider themselves as Marxist. Again though, the goals of Black Lives Matter do not explicitly support Marxism or even really imply Marxism at all. I just think we shouldn't be operating on people's genitals without consent, especially when it's not medically necessary. And that includes the operations done on intersex children. Obviously if it's medically necessary to operate on a child's genitals, then go ahead, but circumcision is rarely necessary and FGM is never necessary. But if it's to make them look normal or for some other social practice, then maybe just wait until they're old enough to make the decision for themselves because it is irreversible. I'm really just not sure why this is a debate because male circumcision can reduce sensation and also has chances of complications. Yes, there are low chances, but when it's an unnecessary procedure, any chance is bad. And the benefits aren't super relevant to the Western societies where it's commonly practiced. You'll probably be on a level playing field if you practice safe sex and have good personal hygiene. FGM is far 
far worse though. There are no benefits to it whatsoever, but there are a whole load of complications. There are so many, I'm just gonna have to read them off the page. So the immediate complications can include severe pain, excessive bleeding, genital tissue swelling, fever, infections, urinary problems, wound healing problems, injury to surrounding genital tissue, shock and death. And the long-term complications can include urinary problems again, vaginal problems, menstrual problems, including painful menstruations and difficulty in passing menstrual blood, scar tissue and keloids, sexual problems, including pain during intercourse and decreased satisfaction, and increased risk of childbirth complications, including difficult delivery, excessive bleeding, cesarean section, need to resuscitate the baby, and newborn deaths. There is no benefit to FGM and there are all of these complications. There is no reason to do it. This is a really great comment about Planned Parenthood and I'll leave a link to it in the description, but I would also recommend having a scroll through because there are other good comments on Planned Parenthood there too. But basically it's just talking about the fact that Planned Parenthood does more than just abortions, which I didn't really cover very much in that video because it was already an hour and 15 minutes and I didn't want to add more fat to it. But yeah, Planned Parenthood does a lot more than abortions and painting it as some evil abortion center is just, not accurate. Okay, I can actually explain this one because it took me a long time to finish this video. Between starting it and you know finishing the writing and then starting filming and then finishing filming and then editing it, it took me all in all a few weeks, maybe about a month even. Not because, you know, it was a lot of work all the time. It, it was a lot of work, but I just, I'm really bad at getting work done. So it was maybe about a full day's worth of work spread out over a month. And every single time I picked it up again, I had to check that nothing had changed because it had been like days or weeks. So I need to make sure that everything that I said was accurate at the time that I was saying it. So when I said in the time between writing and filming, I literally meant the time between writing it and filming it. And then also the time between filming it and filming it again. I'm just a really slow worker, but I want to be accurate. So it means I spend even more time doing that. Also, this is D'Angelo Wallace and he also makes videos and I'd be pretty surprised if you hadn't heard of him. He's pretty much the only commentary-ish style YouTuber that I watch and I definitely recommend checking his stuff out if you don't know about him already which again, would be surprising. Now this is from a video where I said that you could read Harry Potter as a mixed race character and how generally when we read books, we think of characters as being white until described otherwise. I also mentioned in this video about how Harry Potter wizards seem to have a completely different version of racism to us. Their racism is based more on blood status and species, whereas our racism is based more on skin color and race, which spurned this brilliant comment, which I just needed to share with you. And I really like this comment because it brings up something that I find really interesting, which is the fact that a lot of fantasy can be in inherently racist and it can be difficult to engage with it now and still avoid that racism. I've played some D&D and I think it's really interesting how people have taken some of the ingrained racism and modified it so that it's more a case of cultural difference and prejudices rather than literal racism. And the example this comment uses, which I love, is that goblins being kleptomaniacs could be due to the fact that goblin societies share everything. So when goblins move to new societies, they're not used to having to ask for things, which comes off to everyone else as them being kleptomaniacs and constantly stealing. I just think that's an interesting way to read that and look at the lore and take what you want from it whilst kind of brushing away the more racist aspects. I just love that stuff. Finding new and creative ways to interpret fiction will just always be really interesting to me. Okay, I wanna talk about this comment for two reasons. There were other ones like it, but this was the first one I found when I was looking. I know it was probably a joke, but it's still important to mention. Number one, disavowing someone from a group they are literally part of isn't very helpful. I got into that in the video that this comment is on, so I definitely recommend checking that out if you wanna hear more, but ultimately it doesn't really serve to do anything except for make your side look bad. Two, please don't threaten people with violence in my comments or really anywhere. I know this was jokey, but people do get threats and this just adds to it. All it does is open us up for criticism and really it can harm others as well. It's not a good thing. There is no real positive to it. Just don't do it. For example, when JK Rowling came out with her transphobia, she got a lot of threats and she latched onto that which makes it difficult to talk about the things that she's done wrong because people on your side are threatening her. There's no real point to threatening someone when they say something that you don't like. Now, there were a lot of people in the comments saying that I'm not black enough to have called myself black in the title, which is an entire thing in and of itself. And I've already started writing a video about it. But just briefly here, I wanted to bring up this one particular comment because I found it really interesting. Now, this wasn't a negative comment at all. This person was genuinely coming from a good place. And this person is like me. They have one white parent and one black parent, but where they're from, which is Brazil, they say they're classed as white. Whereas I 
am classed as black where I'm from, which is the UK. And I generally identify as black or mixed, but throughout my entire life, I have predominantly been referred to as black, not by my own choice, that is the label that has been put upon me. And saying I'm not is really weird to me because while I recognize that colorism is a thing, I'm still black and I still experience racism. I don't just get a free pass to it because I've got a white parent. In fact, I genuinely didn't even think that this would be an issue or something that people were saying because it's never really come up for me much before in my life. As I said, I chose this comment because it seemed genuine, while so many of the others seemed to be using it as a way to discredit what I'd said without actually having to dismantle my arguments. To the other comments that tried to use my apparent race as a trump card, none of this was meant to be misleading. I had a picture of myself in the thumbnail and I wasn't calling myself black in order to trick people into thinking that I was more black than I was. I was just using the word that I used to identify myself and everyone in my life has used to identify me. I wasn't trying to trick anyone. And it feels kind of silly to me to imply that I was. I feel like what this points to more is the fact that race is a social construct. Depending on where you are in the world and when you are in the world, your race could be different. This is a whole video topic for itself, so I'm gonna cut myself short here but let me know if you want to hear this in a video. Okay, I'm gonna end with this one because it's hilarious to me and I genuinely love it. I'm super open to constructive criticism. Honestly, like I welcome it. If you think that I've done something wrong or that I can improve on something, then leave a comment or better yet, send me an email or a DM because I can't learn if I don't know where I've gone wrong. One thing though, I'd really appreciate if you told me what I was doing wrong because otherwise I can't fix it. This comment doesn't really say what points weren't cogent. It just says learn and read. So I really don't know where to start, but I didn't bring this up just because I'm salty that someone criticized me. That's not it at all. The reason I brought it up was because of this comment. This comment is from the same person insulting how the person in the video I was responding to looks. <laughs> you people did this and just don't please stick to her behavior. It's it's bad enough. Bringing in how she looks doesn't help anyone. It's just petty and it's rude and I don't support it at all. I literally just put myself on top of her thumbnail. I didn't try to make her look bad or anything because I don't see that as being constructive or helpful in the points that I was trying to make. I don't really think it's constructive at all to bring up how someone looks unless it's relevant to what they're saying. For example, if a short man were to say that masculinity is dwindling in our current society and has also said things along the lines of masculinity being related to height, then yeah, you can bring up the fact that it's quite funny that this short man is talking about masculinity while he also thinks that masculinity means being tall perfectly fine thing to bring up. But just attacking how someone looks is a complete waste of time because you're not really gonna get them to change their mind or be on your side by saying, haha, you're ugly. It, it doesn't help anyone. And to the people on your side that also look like that, you're also calling them ugly. It's not constructive and it's just mean. But the irony of commenting on a video saying, you need to learn more and read more because some of your points weren't the best and also commenting on that video insulting someone's appearance is just, <laughs> it's too funny not to mention. <laughs> but that's not to say that I can't do better and I didn't make mistakes because I can do a lot better and I did make mistakes and I'm, I'm aware of that and I want people to make me more aware of that. I'm happy for people to give me constructive criticism. I just thought, <laughs> I just thought this person did a really, really funny job of it. That's the video, I guess. Let me know if you enjoyed it because I definitely enjoyed it. I think this is something that I'd really want to do more regularly. If you want to be in one of these videos, then all you need to do is just leave a really good comment or a really mean comment, but I'd rather you leave a really good comment that I can talk about instead of a mean one that makes me feel sad. But if you want to be more aware of what I'm doing between videos, because let's be honest, it can take me a long time to finish a video, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram. You can join my Discord. It's really fun, it's new. We watch movies, we have good chats, go and join that. Or you can join my Patreon, which is brilliant, I think. It's a fun little place. You can get videos like this early. You can get your name in the credits. You can get shout outs in videos. You get live streams every month. There's extra videos every month. It's a lot of fun. I would definitely recommend checking it out. On top of that, I've got my science podcast, Sci Guys. We've got new episodes out every single week and a bunch of different weekly shows. And then we've also got a live show every two weeks. It's a load of fun over there. I'd really recommend going and joining it if you like long form content, short form content, or just science in general. Also, I've got hats and other clothes in subtle 
Total Pride designs and 50% of my profits from the trans designs go to the charity Mermaid. So definitely go and check that out. There will be a link in the description to that as well. And I just want to say thank you to my patrons who are on screen right now for helping support me and making this my job because it's a lot of fun and I really couldn't do it without you guys. So thank you very much. If there's anything else you want me to expand on in another video, just let me know in the comments. But that is all for me for now.